I know it sounds absolutely insane, but strange as it seems, fixing skyrocketing inflation really could be done overnight. That's right, if central banks really wanted to, they could curb rising prices in an instant. So why on earth are they refusing to act? You see, the crazy truth is, there actually is a simple fix that could stop inflation dead in its tracks. I'll reveal the secret tool, one that seems almost too good to be true. But I'll also show you why using it would be a horrible idea no matter how desperate things get. That's because as effective as this fix might be, it could end up totally tanking our economy and wreaking havoc on people's lives. By the end of this video, you'll see why even mentioning their ultimate fix makes the economic elite break into a cold sweat. Inflation has Americans feeling the financial squeeze. According to the latest Consumer Price Index, prices are up 8.3% over last year, the highest inflation rate since 1981. But if we're being honest, those numbers don't tell the full story. Many of us feel the sting of higher costs eating away at our paychecks more acutely. I mean, gas alone jumped nearly 50% in 2022. As citizens, it's only natural we look to our leaders for relief. So it's understandable why many people feel frustrated with rising costs lately. On one hand, the central bank aims to maintain price stability through its inflation target of 2%. We are fully committed to returning inflation to our 2% goal. Restoring price stability is essential to achieve a sustainably strong labor market that benefits all. But today's stubbornly high inflation exceeds that goal. The Federal Reserve aims to ensure that the economy is stable while also creating more job opportunities for Americans. Currently, the unemployment rate is low at around 3.6%, which indicates a healthy job market. However, there are concerns that the limited availability of workers has resulted in higher wages and prices, leading to inflation and other economic issues. Critics argue that the Federal Reserve may have contributed to the overheating of the economy by maintaining overly accommodative policies for too long in 2021 after the COVID-19 pandemic. The Fed's decision to continue massive bond purchases and keep interest rates near zero is believed to have fueled unsustainable demand, which is now causing inflation. However, others point to the ongoing global supply chain disruptions and shortages as the main drivers of the elevated inflation. Due to the pandemic's lingering effects, war in Ukraine, and ongoing trade volatility, suppliers are struggling to meet the robust demand as economies reopen. If supply constraints are indeed the primary culprit, inflation could potentially ease as production and shipping lines return to normal. However, if interest rates rise too quickly before supply issues improve, it could undo the progress made in jobs just as shortages are starting to get better. I have to say, this is a complicated debate with fair points made on both sides. Policymakers must carefully evaluate whether a lack of goods or high demand is causing more inflation. But economic experts can't seem to agree on the main cause. Unfortunately, for consumers and policymakers alike, there are no clear or risk-free answers in this situation. The Federal Reserve has been increasing interest rates since March in response to high inflation. Despite the hikes, the rates are still historically low, ranging from 1% to 1.25%. Some experts believe that the situation requires more drastic action, while others warn that such measures could harm the economy and job growth. With the rising rates, Borrowing costs have also increased for both businesses and individuals, leading to concerns that abrupt withdrawal of support from the Fed could trigger a recession. The path forward remains uncertain, as central bankers weigh these competing priorities of curbing inflation while sustaining economic momentum. You'd have to agree that it's a high-wire balancing act with considerable downside risks for America's families on either side. The Federal Reserve, the Fed, uses two primary tools to manage the economy, interest rates and quantitative easing. During the pandemic, the Fed used these tools aggressively to save the economy from collapsing. In March 2020, in response to the pandemic, the Fed lowered its policy rate to a record low range of 0 to 0.25%. The purpose of this was to make borrowing cheaper by significantly reducing interest rates. Additionally, the Fed initiated a bond buying program called quantitative easing, which injected hundreds of billions of dollars into the financial system each month to ensure credit kept flowing. At its highest point, it was buying $120 billion per month, which flooded markets with new money. By injecting hundreds of billions into financial markets monthly, quantitative easing was successful in stabilizing panicked conditions and restoring market functionality in 2020. It kept borrowing costs low for households, businesses, and the government, ensuring that credit continued to flow 
even when the real economy ground to a halt. Critics suggest that the current rise in inflation could be due to the excessive liquidity provided by the government. The money supply grew rapidly during the pandemic, while production faced disruptions. If the same amount of goods existed in the economy, but there was twice as much money, then we would think that the price of everything would double. The lockdowns caused supply chains to crash, and the government responded by shutting down commerce and providing stimulus checks. The surge in demand met with constrained supply, which could have fueled the price increases seen today. Some economists link the excess quantitative easing to asset price inflation rather than broad economic gains. As prices rise, the Federal Reserve aims to control inflation. However, reversing pandemic policies too quickly could backfire and harm the economic recovery, which is finally getting back on track. Higher rates alone cannot solve supply issues that fuel inflation. You know, the way we view it, the Fed doesn't actually have any monetary policies that can help with the problems that we have, which is inflation. Hence, the central banks find themselves in a challenging situation. They need to address inflation without risking the economic recovery. Gradual movement, balancing different tools, and closely monitoring data are their best options. Central banks face difficult choices with inflation. On the one hand, people want immediate relief from high prices, but abrupt fixes like sudden huge rate hikes could backfire badly. History shows us that withdrawing monetary support too quickly has risks. Slashing liquidity could pop asset bubbles, causing lending to seize up, which would damage the recovering economy. Even slowing quantitative easing gradually poses dangers. As rates rise, the recovery may stall by making borrowing pricier just as demand rises. Higher borrowing costs could curb spending and investment, tipping the economy into recession. There's no guarantee these actions would even control inflation as intended either. But one thing is for sure, demand-driven inflation is hard to counteract once it starts. As for the Feds, their main lesson is that injecting money into the economy to boost it is easier than precisely cooling prices back down. Therefore, they need to adjust the dials of policy gradually to achieve a soft landing. With so many risks to balance, the bank cannot satisfy everyone. Their job is to lead us towards stable prices and a robust economy without causing any further damage along the way. It is a delicate task that has no simple solutions. So the best we can do is understand their difficult situation and have open discussions to help rather than hinder them in dealing with this complex problem. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.